Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the weekly reading for February 20th to the 26th. And I am recording this Saturday night, which I usually don't do, but I am so curious about the week ahead that I literally couldn't wait until tomorrow morning. Although I will probably post this Sunday morning. Um, so yeah, basically there's not a ton of different things going on this week. It's only the bottom half, like this top half is from last week, but the bottom half is for this week um, that I'm looking at. And the two things that caught my eye is of course we have the two, 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 two portals. So anybody interested in numerology, there you go. It's six twos. I am really beyond curious about that because 20, like two repeating twos are my number. Like I'm born on the 22nd. Um, what, uh, a few years ago when I manifested a massive change that shifted my entire life, I saw a two, 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 two beforehand. It's like, I always see twos when things are about to massively shift and f like for the better, for the better. I love seeing multiple twos. So the fact that I get to be alive on two, 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 so cool. And also, uh, this Tuesday, which is the 2-2-2-2-2-2 day, um, is apparently the United States' Pluto return. And I haven't, this is the first I've heard of this, of, which I was really surprised because astrologists have been talking about this for a couple of years now. Um, and I just, just heard about it for the first time a couple of days ago. And I was like, wow, um, I wish I had known about that back in 2020 because to my mind, Pluto transit, like Pluto is so slow and Pluto transits are so such a long-term thing that everything going on, um, you know, anything newsworthy happening in the US in the last couple of years has all been directly related to its Pluto return. <laughs> you know, so the exact, exact date of the, the return is going to be the, you know, Tuesday on the, the multiple two day. And um, I am just super curious to see what kind of cards we draw because this is, this is a whole, um, it's like a maturation process, right? It's very interesting to, that we can look at Pluto returns in this fashion, like for a country, because we, well, we obviously humans don't live long enough to have a Pluto return, or at least we have not been living long enough, right? Maybe we will get to live long enough to experience Pluto returns in the future. And that would just be a massive, massive maturation process. And it, it's hard to describe this vibe I get. It's this feeling of, okay, this example is gonna be very strange, but it was very synchronous for me. So I'm just gonna try to describe the example. Essentially, uh, I was sitting there thinking about Pluto return and my husband comes up to me and starts telling me the first words out of his mouth was, transformation, right? That was one of the first things he said was transformation and it clued me in. I was like, oh my God, whatever he's going to tell me. And he had a story about pasta. Okay. And he was going to tell me a story about pasta. And I was like, this is going to be a clue. This has something to do with this Pluto return. So he was saying, um, he wanted to start making pasta in a different way. Or of course he says pasta because he's American. So I say pasta because where I'm from, we say pasta, but he says pasta. This is a big point of contention in my household. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to roll with pasta because pasta to me sounds so posh and British, right? Where I'm from, only British people would say pasta, pasta. It's so, it's so British. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, he was saying, apparently if you cook your pasta like 95% of the way and then put it in the fridge, cool it down um, and like let it sit for a couple of hours and then just, you know, heat it back up again in, in hot water and then put your sauce on and all that. Apparently this process of heating up the pasta, cooling it down and then reheating it allows a lot of the starches to go through some kind of chemical transformation, a chemical transformation when after being heated up and then being cooled down, the chemicals transform and apparently, like apparently uh, scientists have studied this and it's like a, a known thing now. I haven't read anything about it. I'm just going on hearsay here, but apparently the starches, be they transform into something that is less digestible to humans, not in a bad way. It would, it literally just makes like your plate of spaghetti have less calories in it, like less calories and less starch, which means less sugars. And it just becomes a type of like chemically changed to chemically transformed starch that just kind of passes right through you and literally so eating leftover pasta is apparently it has just it has less calories in it <laughs> and this is just a thing and i was like so interesting how do, how is that an example for the us pluto return it, uh, somehow some way there there is this cooling off process where things are being transformed to be like less toxic less intense um less 
less like an angry teenager, right? <laughs> you know how teenagers are very intense, very hot-headed, very, very like go, 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 like everything all the time. And then, you know, at some point in our 20s, we go through a chilling out process, a chilling out process. It feels to me like there is potential for the US to be doing this. So I have no idea if there's gonna be some kind of event that comes up in the news this week, um, or if this is more of a long-term thing that is happening over many years. I mean, I know this is a long-term thing happening over many years, but we could, I guess, we'll find out in a few days, we'll find out if something happens this week um, about it. So let's just, I'm gonna just draw some, okay, I picked this out, pick, pick the deck up, bottom of the, bottom of the deck is death. So <laughs> yeah, transformation is at hand. Um, whether or not this is going to be happening in a way that we can see, obviously, or not, I don't know. We won't know until something happens. So let's just draw some cards and see what, like, what some messages are here about this. <laughs> um, okay. Well, that's the tower, guys. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Uh, I really don't want to be that person who's like predicting that something's gonna happen But all I can tell you is we're talking about a Pluto return on a two 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 day We had the death card now. We got the tower card <laughs> Let me let's find out I'm gonna keep this very general because I am not in the business of making these types of you know wide sweeping predictions but let's just find out what the cards have to say what well, I'm, I'm in my mind right just now i was asking what can you tell us about the nature of this tower moment the fool new beginning a new beginning okay in what area in what area of life for the U.S. and you know, some I, I don't typically obviously talk about national specific things, but of course, a lot of you are Americans who watch my channel just because I speak English and this is the internet, so therefore a lot of you are Americans. And you know, I live in the U.S., so I'm interested in that because I live here and because my family is American. And um, even for people who are watching this, if you're not American and you don't live in the U.S., you know, the U.S. has such an enormous um, energetic ripple effect that, you know, it tends to affect the whole planet, <laughs> whether we like it or not, right? Okay, so what area, what area of life, what area of, well, like, what sphere, what sphere is this happening in? Three of discs works. Well, this is a really positive card. This is a transformation and a clearing in how people work together. The Three of Pentacles is all about working together. Is, are, we, are we heading to a new beginning for how we work together? For how the American political system like works together? How people work together in the US? Are we heading to some kind of compromise? Could we be heading to some kind of compromise? Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> um, Eight of Swords, Isolation. The Eight of Swords um, is about freeing yourself from things that have been holding you black. Things that have been, <laughs> that was a strange slip of the tongue. I meant to say things that have been holding you back. <laughs> things that have been holding you back, um, especially like ideas or cages of the mind that have been holding you back. Cages of the mind that have been holding you back. <sighs> So this to me is indicating, how do I put this in as neutral a way as possible? People, t what I'm hearing is people taking back what is theirs. People, people taking back what is theirs, whatever that means. That's a message I'm specifically getting. What I wanted to say about this is people walking away from structures that are no longer serving them. People finally saying this, what's the word? Like, I want to say this program, but that's not exactly it. This program, this structure, this, this network, 
belongs in the past, belongs in the past. It's not something we want to take with us. We want to leave it behind. We just want to leave it behind and focus on moving forward into the future. King of Discs, power. That's not very surprising given that we're talking about Pluto energy here, right? Pluto return, Pluto energy. <sighs> Get that to focus. I feel like this has been blurry and I can't figure out why. <laughs> um, okay, so power struggles on both sides uh, or like all sides, right? Power struggles on all sides. Um, the butting of heads. This basically comes down to a power struggle between people and government, right? And unfortunately, like, I shouldn't have to say that, right? I shouldn't have to say a power struggle between people and government because there should not be a separation between people and government because the the, peop the people should be the government and the government should be the people. There shouldn't be this, this separation. And maybe that is what people are starting. I mean, obviously, people have been sick of it, right? People have been sick of that. <sighs> but that... <sighs> That's how, that's the themes. That's the themes for what this is going to play out. I am not going to predict specific events of how this could play out. But there we have the general themes, okay? Power struggles between people and government, but something clearing away. We have like three cards of clearing away the past and having a fresh start. The tower moment coming through to clear something out, but this tower moment card also has this elect, like, a, like lightning bolt to ignite people. And the Fool is this new beginning, new beginning, new beginning. And the Eight of Swords is this walking away from shackles that have bound you, from things that have held you back. It, it's the, releasing the cage of the mind. Releasing the cage of the mind, okay? Um, but really, at the center here, we have this really beautiful Three of Discs, the Three of Pentacles, with which is such a cooperative energy. Such a cooperative energy. This is people working together. Okay, so I take this as a very, very helpful sign that we can have, right? The U.S. <laughs> the U.S. Americans can have this new beginning, can have this rebirth of cooperation, a rebirth of cooperation. So a rebirth of cooperation, you know, we, I wish, I mean, and it could, right? A rebirth of cooperation could happen magically and mysteriously and just like that. But if there are elements that are trying to hang on to power, there could need to be a tower moment to clear out the clinging to power. Eight of Swords can actually indicate that someone has been clinging to power and it's not necessarily in the way that you think. Like on a personal level, Eight of Swords can be, um, you know, holding on to your ego, holding on to the way things used to be and not willing, be, not being willing to give up the past. So a tower moment can come through and kind of clear that out for you so that you can become free to move into your better, brighter future. So... Yeah, that's all I'm going to say, I think. I'm going to keep it general, keep it with just those energetic themes, and we will know what happens when it happens, if anything happens, right? If anything happens. It's it's funny because, you, you know, with everything that's been happening in the world for the last couple of years, um, it's like you could almost <laughs> take, like, literally any any astrological moment, and there's just always so many different things happening. It's kind of crazy, so... We'll just see how things unfold this week. And I actually, uh, apparently, I didn't even really realize that I picked up this deck. I want to draw one of these heart cards for this. I'm going to close my eyes while I shuffle these because they're all different. That's the one. Beautiful blue. So Pisces, which reminds me, right? Who is glad that Pis that Aqu Aquarius season isn't over? Is, is <laughs> Losing my ability to speak. What is going on? I, for one, am glad that Aquarius season is over and we are now in the beautiful, watery, emotionality, warmth and sweetness of Pisces season. I have so been enjoying feeling my emotions come back online and just dropping out of my mind. And all of those like things I was worrying about last month, all of my like overactive mental activity has slowed way down and here I am in the beautiful depths of the Pisces season and I'm so much enjoying it. And this really reminds me of that. Look, we have the moon. We have these two people holding each other. Embrace. Through each other, you find the missing pieces. Oh my God, guys. Doesn't this speak of coming 
finding common ground, coming to compromise. Venus and Mars are still conjunct, traveling through the sky, right? And they're also in Capricorn. And of course, the Pluto return is happening in Capricorn. So really, I feel like with some clearing away, there is massive potential here for coming together. And it's like, this doesn't have to be playing out on some kind of big stage, right? This could be playing out in everybody's individual lives, in everybody's individual, like, local areas, right? It's like, okay, maybe you don't see on a national level, maybe there's not going to be big news on a national level, but maybe you see on a local level um, compromises coming together. I've actually been seeing this where, where I live, people, you know, different protests going on um, and, you know, this, this and that, the whole back and forth thing. Um, but... People are, 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 like I'm seeing little signs of people finding common ground, people coming into compromise and people just kind of getting done with the fight. <laughs> people getting done with the fight and wanting to embrace, right? This is so positive for, for this, right? Through each other, you find the missing pieces. And, you know, it's like finding that third thing, finding the third thing, finding the third neutral space. Because we have the three of discs here, which is, you know, it's not just the two things, because in terms of, you know, the U.S. political sphere, we tend to think two parties, right, black and white, all of that. Um, but here it's finding the third thing, finding the third thing, finding the third neutral space, which is very transformative. Okay. Okay, that's all I want to say about this Pluto return, because I just could not resist drawing some cards on that. But I also just want to, okay, I just picked up the bottom of the deck and it's two of cups, union. Okay. Yeah, I am very hopeful about this, okay? No matter what, uh, you know, no matter what comes up in the news this week, guys, I am hopeful that this is all part of the process of coming into an embrace, right? Coming into a embrace and coming into that union of the Two of Cups. I am very, very hopeful. <laughs> so the other thing going on this week, the only other thing in terms of, you know, significant astrological influences, there are minor ones I could talk about, but I didn't really feel interested. On Thursday, the 24th, Mercury is square Uranus. Okay, mentioning that because that is very electric, very intense. Very, very, <laughs> like a lot. So, I mean, Mercury squares Uranus uh, like a couple of times a year. And it, this is one of those days where you wake up and you just might be like, wow, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or wow, I woke up with my mind scattered all over the place or you might wake up and like other people are in a bad mood it's just this feeling of you know do you ever like go out into the world and everyone's honking their horns and everyone's like driving like crazy and there's just lots of people outside and people are like yelling and throwing things and it's just like nothing nothing really nothing really crazy is happening but it just seems like everyone's on edge i actually noticed one time when mercury was square uranus i um went down into the parking lot uh you know outside my apartment building and there was just, it was like the middle of the night, but there were a bunch of people sitting in their cars, like by themselves and like with their engines idling, even though it wasn't like, it was a nice day. Like they could have had their windows down. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. This is a day where everything can feel off. Okay. And you could feel this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, but it is a pretty quickly passing energy because Mercury moves very fast. Um, so just know, okay, and I was going to say, yeah, Mercury moves very fast and what popped out, eight of wands. Okay, movement. It's a very, very fast moving energy. This is a day of everything kind of happening, everything feeling a little bit chaotic. It's not like bad. It's nothing to be afraid of or anything and nothing to really worry about. But it's just an energy. Like if you wake up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and everything feels weird, chaotic, intense. Um, if you find yourself back in your mind, um, you know, because these are both air, Mercury and Uranus are both air energy, both like, um, they're both, um, it's like the, the lower mind and the higher mind, right? Mercury is our human mind and Uranus is our higher mind, our higher self's mind. Um, it can be just like, it can be a little bit uncomfortable and it can be a lot, but don't worry. It's a very, very p quickly passing energy. And it's just something to just like, personally, what I'm going to do on Thursday is I'm just going to kind of chill at home and not really uh, have anything intense to do. Um, that doesn't mean you can't go out and have an awesome day, right? D don't feel like you need to stay home just because the just because of the, what the planets are doing. That's not what I'm saying at all. It just so happens that for me, um, I don't have anything to do on Thursday and I'm just going to stay home and chill because I know that I'm kind of sensitive to a Mercury um, square Uranus type of thing. And so the other two cards that popped up are 
Seven of Swords, you know, this deception, but the Empress, okay? And I have a, like a thing with the Seven of Swords. Everyone's like, yeah, it's deception. Yeah, it's like someone stealing stuff from you and stuff like that. And I mean, yeah, it can manifest like that. That is part of it. But the Seven of Swords, it can be something that seems like a mistake or something that seems like a deception or even something that seems like a, like a small type of betrayal. The Seven of Swords is not like a big betrayal. It's not like the Ten of Swords, okay? It's like, um, somebody like lying about having eaten the last cookie or something like that. It can be something silly. Um, but with the Seven of Swords, there's always a purpose to it. There's always, always a purpose to it. It's just that the thing is not pleasant, right? It's not a very pleasant energy, but it, it is to activate your solar plexus, what this is all about, activating your solar plexus and getting you to um, put yourself out there and to stand your own ground, okay? To stand your own ground and to really like, be the candle in the darkness. It's like to, to be your own self. It, it is always to get you to um, tune into a deeper aspect of your own authenticity and put it out there, okay? And sometimes that happens, sometimes, not always, okay? Just sometimes that happens through a deception, okay? It's like if you have been, if you've been avoiding expressing your authenticity, then something can happen in your life. You know, someone, you could catch somebody lying to you or somebody could steal something from you um, in, a, in a small type of way. And that could make you put yourself out there. That puts you in, in a position where you have to stand your ground, put your foot down and put yourself out there. Um, but if you are tuned into this and go, okay, this is like this Mercury square Uranus kind of day. It's a seven of swords day. You just know that, okay, you just, you just do you, do you, right? Become the empress. We have the empress here. Be this empress, be this beautiful mountain lion, cougar, puma, whatever you like to call them, <laughs> right? You do you, you do, or maybe that's actually just a lioness. I, I, I was thinking mountain lion because I thought I, for a minute, I thought I was using the Pacific Northwest deck. Maybe that's just an actual lion. So whatever, you know, big cat, <laughs> be the big cat. Just, and know that being yourself and standing in your authenticity doesn't have to actually involve fighting someone. This is, this is something I, I realized the other day. Um, I had, I had actually, when I had been doing a reading, if some of you might have seen it, I don't remember what video it was, but I was talking about, I, in my mind, I have a little imaginary world where I go to. It's like, I, I have a little island and I'm a mermaid and I swim around the water in my island and then I go into the middle of the island. But sometimes energies that I don't want to, to interact with, sometimes they come like, dun -nah, dun -nah, like sharks in the water, right? They start coming at my island and, um, I have a, a guardian centaur who like trots around my island and he like zaps the energies that I don't like with his pitchfork, right? Or with his, with his trident, with his trident. And as soon as I, as, as soon as I heard myself saying that on a video, I realized I was like, why does he have, why is he zapping energies, right? He doesn't need to be attacking energies. It's like, it's within his um, purview to be defending me, to be removing energies that I don't want from my island, right? He's, I'm allowed to have a defense system, but I don't need to be like zapping things. Like that's, that's unnecessary, right? And I was, so as soon as I made that video, I was like, okay, he doesn't, he doesn't need to have, of an electric shock trident anymore. What he's now gonna have is a portal gun. So now his trident, when he when there's like a shark coming at me, he like makes a portal. He like shoots a portal out of his trident. It's like a portal gun and <laughs> opens up a portal and then the shark just zips through to wherever the shark wants to go. <laughs> no battle necessary, right? No, no antagonism necessary, no electric shocks, literally just portaling the shark through to wherever the shark's paradise is. And so that is how I am now looking at dealing with um, when en when an energy energy comes at me that I don't want. You know, my whole human life it has always been like I have always tried to like shut it down, shut it down, push it away, right? But now I'm seeing. And what if instead of pushing it down or pushing it away, I just redirect it? So you can do that by using portal technology. You know, and some of you are portal keepers. You can literally make an energetic portal, even if maybe you're, you're not right now able to open up a portal in the floor. Well, you can still make an energetic portal, right? You can still open an energetic portal and send that energy through the portal to wherever the wherever the energy wants to go. And then that is when every everything involved is the most happy because you got you moved away from the energy that you didn't want. 
and the energy got to go where the energy wanted to go and now it is perfectly happy because instead of um, like kind of like vampirizing on you, right? Instead of eating you, <laughs> the energy got to go where it wanted to go and now it doesn't need to vampirize or eat anybody. It gets to be in its own little paradise and that is how everybody gets what they want, right? Redirect the energy. And so um, I've been thinking a lot, about, a lot about that. How do we redirect energies, right? Instead of clashing, instead of doing this butting heads, instead of doing this um, like unstoppable force meets the immovable object type of type of clash right just redirect the energy send it to where it wants to go um yeah you know that's a theme in the live action mulan movie yeah redirecting redirecting energy and it takes very little energy to redirect something right it's like if something's coming in just just redirect it and then send it to wherever it wants to go that would be the ideal of what we want to do with all of this. And I'm thinking like, I'm looking at this energy going, okay, Mercury square Uranus. Um, that's a day like, you know, sometimes um, my husband and I are sitting around and, you know, we've had enough fights in our, you know, time together that sometimes like, we can feel the fight coming. And sometimes at this point we look at each other and go, is it fight day? Like, do we need to fight? Is this fight day? Is this happening? <laughs> and now the vast majority of the time, if we can look at each other and go, is it fight day? Is it fight day? Now we go, okay, well, we're not going to fight. <laughs> okay, we're going to, and then we have to decide like, okay, are we just going to go our separate ways and just chill out and, you know, just wait for this to pass? Or is there something we can discuss very rationally without anybody getting upset and exploding on the other person, right? Um, or can we just completely like, go somewhere, right? Go, get outside, go somewhere, go for a walk, take the dog out, do something that completely takes us out of the energy. What can we do to kind of um, preemptively redirect the energy of fight day, right? Can, how can we avoid fight day before the fight actually happens? Of course, sometimes, sometimes the fight has to happen, right? Sometimes it has to happen and that's fine because the fight always manages to process some energy and get us delved down to the bottom of some nitty gritty thing. You know, of it, it's like, I can't, I can't even deal how many times my husband and I start arguing. But we only argue about two things, okay? We only argue about money and other people. We like never have issues between the two of us. It's only about these third party things like money and other people, okay? we That's it. It's the only two things we argue about. And it's funny because every time we end up having like a fight day, by the time we get to the end of the fight, like four hours later at two in the morning, right? It's, um... We're, we're both like crying about something that happened in our childhoods and I'm like this is ridiculous right like we had this stupid fight just so that we could process and ultimately release some kind of ridiculous childhood baggage that we were apparently repressing up until now even <laughs> so <sighs> yeah all of this somehow has everything has something to do with the energy of the week I feel like this is one of those weeks that is going to make more sense in hindsight and less sense in foresight um, but let me get another one of these. And since I was talking about arguing with my husband, let's get another one of these heart cards. I'm going to close my eyes and shuffle. It's funny though, now I know, ever since I started following astrology, that like my marital, marital, marital arguments are very synchronous with specific types of astrological transits. It's very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna cut the deck. There we go. Wow, doesn't that look like the Eight of Wands? <laughs> Going in a different direction, but look at that. Look at that light coming in, lighting up her third eye, her throat. Wow, lighting up all of her chakras. A message for you. I'm thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you. That's a message for somebody. I'm just going to leave it at that. So we're going to just let this week unfold and see what happens. So I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.